I think it's very easy, uh, it's a very human thing, and I'm, I'm susceptible to it, but to mistake being busy with being productive. Mm. You know, if, we, if I leave the house and I'm doing stuff for eight hours, I can come home and, and uh, you know, cheat myself into thinking like, whoa, hard, hard day's work. But I may or may not have been delivering any value that day. I may have just been doing things to keep myself keep myself busy. Uh, but sometimes you got to just strip that away and say, okay, what are the things that really matter and how do I do that first? Yeah. And, and some of that just comes from the way we're conditioned to think about work, right? I mean, you know, for me, my first job was at a grocery store and no one said we're going to pay you X amount of dollars per unit of value created, right? Or yeah. per customer satisfied. They said per hour. And so you kind of right. inherit this mentality very early on that, my work is based on my time, how much time I spend being a busybody at a location. But then yeah. part of developing a wealthier entrepreneurial mindset is saying, all right, it's not about trading in time. It's about value. Mm -hmm. It's a reward for creating value. Yep. Yeah. W when did you realize that? Um, well, I think that when, you're, uh, when, when, your own, when your salary comes from yourself, you realize that real quickly, mm. you know? Um, I mean, you know, most of the jobs I had were um, more hourly jobs. Interestingly, when I was in college, so I painted houses was one of my first jobs, and that's how I made money going through college. And most of that was hourly, but at one point my boss told a couple of us, said, hey, I'm going to pay you all piecework. You know, I'll pay you $20 every window you paint. I'll pay you $100 for painting the side of that house. I'll pay, and it just, I remember that drastically changed how I thought about my work. No longer was it, mm -hmm. okay, how much time till I'm done here and get to go home? And it turned like uh, that next window but it became another opportunity as opposed to looking at the clock. In fact, looking at the clock became, how can I get this done faster? And there was one guy I was working with and he would always, he could, he would paint, you know, better than me and he was 30% faster every time. And by the time I was done painting three windows, he's got five done. And it would drive me crazy, but I just could not keep up. But I love that kind of approach because you're thinking about what are we actually getting done and what's the value that we're providing. And I think that that's even carried forward into how I've tried to create the culture of our, of our company. You know, I, I, I try to strip away the, the things that can trick us into, into that, which mainly these days are time and place. You know, and so we've stripped away office hours. And I always say we have office hours, but they're not for our staff, they're for our clients. And we have certain days that we're closed, not for the staff, but for client meetings. But when it comes to, you know, what time do you have to show up? I'm not gonna tell you. What time do you, are you allowed to go home? I'm not gonna tell you. We're just gonna talk about what needs to get done and let's everybody do that. There was a book that I read several years back that really was that whole philosophy, it's not about you know, when we work and where we work, it's about what we get done. So you strip away the yeah. rule. Most of the, the, the rules at work are around things like that. So you take those away and then you say, well, what are we going to focus on? How do we know that we're actually being productive? Great question. Yeah. If we don't know how we're being productive when we strip away time and place, then we, we really need to have that hard conversation. Because even if somebody's at work at the right time, how do you know they're being productive then? You don't, but we fool mm -hmm. ourselves into thinking that maybe we are if I sit down here at 8.30 and sit there till five o'clock. Yeah, yeah, because you, there's at least some sacrifice being made, right? Right, or there, there's, again, it's kind of what we were talking about earlier. It has the uh, perception of work, Yeah. right? Even if it's not delivering value in the same way that, you know, I can do things to try to keep myself busy. And when in the reality, I may have, my best idea may come in the shower, you know? Yeah. Uh, which is, uh, sometimes does because that's like the one time that you can't, I'm not going to connect into any device and so my brain gets going. So I, I don't know if this is the book you were, you were thinking of, but there's a book called Work Doesn't Have to Be Crazy. Mm, and, it's uh, not, but and, I want to hear more. Yeah, well, well he talks about this concept and, and how you know, we have all of these conventional assumptions surrounding work, like we have to look like we're working, we have to be at a certain place at a certain time. And, and, and there's a lot of studies that show that many of these traditional practices, having meetings about everything, all of that, that it actually hinders productivity and it mm. enables the kind of hiding we're talking about. But there was one challenge that he talked about having to overcome when he began to implement this philosophy in the workplace, and that was this idea that ambiguity creates anxiety. Mm. That when you take away those traditional metrics for productivity, 
then it becomes a thing of like, well, wait a minute, if, if I can come in when I want, like, how do I know? How do I know that, that I'm doing okay? How do I know that I'm all right? Yeah. Do you find that you have to find, that you have to hire a special kind of personality to be able to thrive in an environment where they're not constantly being told what to do? Yeah, I mean, there, there is twofold. A, there is the right person. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and I think there also, you have to cr- come up with different metrics that, that to look at. So I don't think that you can say, well, we don't look at anything, right? But we can look at things like, what's the, what's the quality of, of work that you're putting out? How happy are the clients? How much work were you able to bill in a month, you know, even though we um, we track our time, but we don't track our time because we bill hourly. We only track our time. We we bill flat fees, but we track our time to understand, you know, where where is our time going? Yeah. And so, uh, but also the there is the right person. We ha- you have to be a little bit of a self starter uh, to work at Matchstick. And I've always said that some companies you can come in and they'll give you the playbook that. 99% of it, if you follow it, you did it right, and then there's maybe 1% extra that you got to figure out. It, it, at Matchstick, we're going to give you about 60, 70, probably closer to 60% of what you need to get your job done. And then that other 40%, you're just going to have to figure out, and you're going to have to be creative, and you're going to have to take ownership and action as one of our guiding principles. Um, so, you know, but there, there have been people that, in hindsight, I realized you know, kind of through trial and error. Oh, you know what? That person didn't fit here because they they needed things to be spelled out for them. And we're just not going to do that for someone. 